Hi, I'm Steve Hagelin, and welcome to The Library Show. Today we're talking about summer camps, Fold 3, and homebound services at the library. With me here today is Laura Payton. She's the homebound services coordinator. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. So, today we're talking about homebound services. What is that for people who don't know? Well, uh, the library's homebound service offers delivery of regular and large print books, um, as well as books on CD to anyone uh, of any age who's not able to get to the library on their own. Okay, so you take the books out to people in their homes. It's yes. almost like a library delivery service. <laughs> books on wheels, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. Now, what kind of people are el el eligible for that kind of thing? Um, really, anyone that uh, would like to receive books but is unable to drive or to leave their home uh, for whatever reason, physical limitations and uh, such. So, uh, we also serve people who may be temporarily homebound, like if they've had surgeries, um, or uh, injuries, those with health issues like COPD who can't get out in the um, the rough summer or winter or summer months, uh, either one, if they just have troubles with uh, getting to the library during those times. Okay, so it's for mm -hmm. a lot of different people, so you can be yes. eligible for even if you just can't get out temporarily. Right, okay. a, a season or a, a period of uh, recovery from something. Interesting, mm -hmm. so if you are maybe on disability at the moment and you're just not going to work, but you want to read some books or study while you have time at home, you can still qualify for the service. I would definitely have someone call the library and just kind of give them the basic idea of what mm -hmm. uh, their limitation is, and we could probably serve them, yes. Okay, so if someone wants to get signed up and they like the idea of having books delivered or being able to get books um, from the library, mm -hmm. they just need to call, right? Right. Um, okay. The library's number 932-2665 or 932-BOOK. Um, or they can also email me. I have an email address that's uh, homebound, which is all one word, at lebanonlibrary.org, O-R-G. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm there Monday through Friday. If they happen not to be there or be out delivering, they can leave a message and um, I'll get back with them and just get some basic information and make sure they qualify. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, this is great. So I, I feel like some people might not know about this service. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you take the books and would you drive? Well, I drive <laughs> a bookmobile of sorts, mm -hmm. uh, uh, various a uh, very generous donation by a patron uh, mm -hmm. uh, helped provide that uh, uh, new van that we have. Um, and yeah, I just go to people's homes. I also go to nursing facilities, um, assisted living, um, retirement communities. Um, but like I say, not, not necessarily age specific, um, just anyone who can't get out. Okay, mm -hmm. so do you see a lot of the same people on your routes? Um, yes, I have a four-week um, delivery period, so every four weeks I see the same people again and try to accommodate however many books or books on CD they need for that period. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you said books, but then also uh, audio books, right? Yes. On CDs, you yes. deliver those too. Yes, some people really enjoy having those, those with um, vision issues or who just enjoy listening as opposed to having a book. Mm -hmm. And we have a few um, players that are also available if the person happens not to have um, a CD player. We can uh, even loan those out as like another uh, thing that you lend. Those are like the play away mm, things. Uh, no, an actual uh, CD player. Oh, you have yes. CD players, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's great. So if they don't have a CD player, they can still get audiobooks when you yes. bring those in. Oh, yes, yeah, great. we just uh, have a little barcode attached to the CD player, check that out to them so we know who's got what. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, uh, let's see, what are some of the service areas you cover? I know it's just oh, Lebanon. Or? Yes, we cover uh, the whole city of Lebanon area, um, Turtle Creek Township, okay. and also the village of South Lebanon and Union Township, which is the area around South Lebanon, and that's because South Lebanon does not have a public library, so we can serve them as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, it, let's say you're somebody and you have uh, maybe a grandparent or someone that might be interested. Should they call in or sh can you call in for someone else? Uh, you can call in and maybe just kind of lay the groundwork, make sure mm -hmm. that they're in the service area and that yeah. they would qualify because yeah, they might be reluctant to do that on their own. So yeah, we right. definitely encourage people who can benefit from the service or know someone who does to, to call us and we'll get some information and hopefully get them served. Right, because mm -hmm. I feel like some of the viewers might have a grandparent or maybe a friend who's mm -hmm. interested and 
you know, they want to get the ball rolling, get oh, some yes. books. So, okay. Definitely. We, do that. we definitely appreciate anyone reaching out uh, so we can help serve everyone who, who needs the service. Yeah. Um, and so is there a limit on the number of books they can check out? What's the limit there? I believe it's the same as the library's limit, which is 99 books at a time, but I prefer <laughs> not to tote that many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's not that much room in the yes. van. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the same policy as well with um, returns. Um, they can renew the books for up to a year as long as no one has a hold on what they currently have checked out. So Now, when they do renewals, uh, how does that work? Do they talk to you about it when you come to return? Them? Yeah, they just um, you know give me back what they're finished with and say I didn't uh, get this one read yet. May I keep it? And I just keep a little record with me of anything that another patron may have a hold mm -hmm. on. So I'll let them renew that as long as it's not one of those items. Okay, and then so you check it back in from them until you, yes. you get it from yes. them. Yes, I am the check in and check out process. Oh, great, that is <laughs> awesome. Now, okay, let's say you have a scenario where uh, someone wants to check out a book and the library doesn't have it yet. Mm -hmm. Do they have any ability to order books through you? Uh, yes. Um, in fact, um, there have been a lot of titles suggested by some of the patrons I have that uh, look like titles of interest to, you know, the the general population mm -hmm. of the library. So they have been known to order books that my patrons requested. And the nice thing for them is that uh, I think the library charges a dollar fee for any uh, books requested by uh, the general patrons mm -hmm. uh, for ordering that, and they don't charge that to the homebound patrons. Oh, nice. They also don't get charged um, late fees. Oh, there's no late fees. <laughs> no. This is great. Wow. <laughs> no. This is a really nice deal. Okay. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Okay, so what's your favorite part about doing this service? Oh, definitely the people. <laughs> I just have formed some really great friendships with some of these patrons, and I just, you know, I like the feeling that comes with so many of them saying how great a service this is that the library provides and how much they appreciate it. So, yeah, it's best job I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely no sounds like to a former employer. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely sounds like a really valuable service. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad people know about it. Okay, one more time. It's the Homebound Library Service, mm -hmm. and to sign up, people need to do what? Uh, either call me at the library, the 932-2665-932 book, or email me at, this is all, all together, homebound at lebanonlibrary.org. Okay, great. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show and telling Thank us about Homebound. Thank you for having homebound. me. I hope that it gets the word out. <laughs> yeah, great. All right, next up we're going to be talking to Holly Browning about the Fold 3 Military Records Research Database at the library. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school and I didn't do it. My support team never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew who I could become as a person. Surprise! I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. I have here with me Holly Browning, who's going to tell us about the Fold3 Research Database. Welcome back, Holly. Thank you. All right, so today we're talking about Fold3. Yes. What is that? Okay, so Fold3 is a large database with convenient access to military records. Um, they include uh, personal photos, letters, and documents of the men and women who have served our country. These records can help you discover um, and share stories about everyday heroes, forgotten soldiers, and the families behind them. Uh, 2010, Ancestry actually purchased Fold3 from something called iArchives, Inc. And they rebranded the name uh, and turned it into Fold3 and focused primarily on the military records. Okay, so, so mm -hmm. if you're into Ancestry records and doing right. genealogical research, 
this is a really great resource if you had a lot of family members in the armed forces or military. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. You can find a lot of neat things. So what is, where does Fold 3 come from? What does that mean? Well, it's actually really interesting. Fold 3 is from the traditional flag folding ceremony of the United States flag. And I did not know, and I learned uh, by, do by studying this, that each fold of the flag, when they do the ceremony, is symbol, it means something. Um, so the third fold of the flag is in honor and remembrance of the veterans who gave some or all of their life um, in defense of our country and to promote peace around the world. Um, it's an aptly named site for sure. I thought that was a great name for it. Yeah. Yeah. So you could do research on family members who are in the armed forces, and you can. You said you can find photos, uh, records. Yes. Yeah. Things like Enlistment that. dates, everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, now this is this is free, right? This is free. Yes, okay. it's free on our online resources. However, if you do have your own Ancestry subscription, it's free for you as well. Okay. Um, you can become a member on the site and pay, but for our purposes, for our online databases, um, it is free to our patrons. There are only there are some few key differences. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot save or share any of your information mm -hmm. that you find, so you can't download a photo and, and maybe share it. Um, you would just um, primarily just see it on the site there. Um, could but you, you can. A, could I'm, you print something out? You probably can, actually. Yeah. yeah, you probably could print the records out if you needed them. So that if you're sort of thing. gonna have a family reunion and you wanna do some research on military history in your family, you could print out a couple of these records, print out some photos, right. and then share them with your friends and family like that. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. and that's all free, and you can do it through the library's website. That's correct. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so you want to show us a little bit about how to get on here and how patrons can log in? Yes, absolutely. Let's, let's do that. Okay. So I have up already the Lebanon Public Library. I'm, I'm this far. And I think I should probably remind people watching that if, if this is too complicated, they can just come into the tech center and we'll walk them through it. Absolutely. Right? Yes, okay. downstairs. Any of our associates will help you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we'll do a brief little demo here. Okay. So I'm on the... Lebanon Library's website here. Correct. LebanonLibrary.org. And what do I? Where do I go from here? You're going to go to the online resources there in the header. Okay. And we've mm -hmm. done a lot of resources here in the past, so a lot of great stuff in this section. So let's see here. And I think this is where we can find things like ancestry, African American ancestry, Linda. Right. Lots of good right. stuff here. All of our great databases. Yeah. And then we are going to go to fold three, right? Right. So okay. you, there, there is an alphabet at the top there. It's easier to get to Okay. if you want to just push F. All right. So let's see here. So here's fold three. Mm -hmm. This is the website we should see when we click on fold three. Right. Okay. That is so going to be the home like. page there. Mm -hmm. OK. So it looks like we've got a lot of nice stuff here. Stuff here. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of records here. Absolutely. Yeah. They have records from million. every American war since the Revolutionary War. And if you would like, they actually, they have them in each, I'm sorry, each um, section. They have the Civil War, um, they have World War One, World War Two. You can go through with each of the different wars and look up records in itself. So if I know I just had, you know, an uncle and I know he was in the Civil War and that's all I know, I can kind of start to narrow it down from there right. by choosing right. whichever war they fought in. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are we going to search for anybody today? Well, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll show. Let's search for, I have a great uncle who was in World War II. His name is Edwin T. Wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y. Okay. And we'll see what comes up just as a demo here. Okay, here, so looks like it's loading these records. Here we go. Okay, so I've got someone here from a World War II record here. That is correct. Okay. Yeah, it looks like, I believe that would be an enlistment record. Okay, and so then I've got a photo or a memorial here. Absolutely, that's another thing that uh, Fold3 has, and it's really, really incredible. Um, when you have a subscription, now this is actually not on the online database, this mm -hmm. is extra, um, but you can create your own memorial wall for your soldier or your hero and your family, and it's, it's really neat. 
Oh, okay. um, yeah, you can put any information that you have, um, where they served, all their records, and you can go through and look at those on our online database as well. You can look through, they have a Vietnam wall as well. Um, it's really incredible. Yeah, this is great. Okay, so let's go back to our results there. And, okay. And you can just kind of, you know, look through those and see if, first to check and see if that's the person you're looking for mm -hmm. um, and, and the different records that they have. So we've got headstone application, casualty list, right. a couple photos here, a registration card. Absolutely. You would be amazed at what you can find. Yeah, and this is a wealth of information if you're trying to put together someone's genealogical details. Right. Because it looks like these records are really well kept and we've got a ton of information about where they were enlisted, when they died, where they are buried. This is great. I love this. And I think it's a great it's a great thing that you can share with your family, your family that doesn't know, or maybe your children. Um, it's great for them to know about the men and women who um, fought, have fought and continue to fight, you know, valiantly for um, our freedoms and the liberties that we hold dear. And um, I think it's important that they know um, the sacrifices that people have made um, for our country to be so great. So, yeah. Yeah. And wow, there's even information about uh, the level of education they had. Oh, what yes, occupation yes. They had. <laughs> yes. This is incredible. Where they registered, I think, yeah, it's, wow. you know. So a lot of stuff that, you know, maybe if you're into ancestry, you might not have found on the regular ancestry page. Right, right. A lot of extra and information. I think that's why they did it. They created that to just streamline it mainly to military records and mm -hmm. the ability to make the honor walls and to be able to look through and see, you know, who was so important to someone's family and, and that thing. So right. I love it. Yeah. Now yeah. it looks like you've done some research on your own. You've, you've got a couple props here. I have, yes. Um, knowing about this sort of thing, the sacrifices that the soldiers have made um, has always been important in my family. So this was actually something my mother has. It uh, is my great uncle that we just uh, looked up. His name is Edwin Wesley. Um, he was actually killed in action um, April of 1945 in the last push through Germany. And um, he received actually the Purple Heart, which we have, and this was the flag um, that they sent home with the casket. So it's, it's really important to us. Um, we, we really take pride in it. Wow, yeah, that yeah. is amazing. All right, well, thanks so much for telling us about Fold3. And one more time, uh, they can, patrons can get on the Lebanon Library's website, right? Right. And log in. Mm -hmm. And if they try it on their own at mm -hmm. home and they're confused, they can come into the library, right? And learn absolutely, about it. Yeah. absolutely. You can ask for me or any of the associates downstairs will be able to help you. Okay, and now one more thing. Can, mm -hmm. they, can they access this at home or do they have to come into the library? You can. You can access this at your home. You just use your library card to log in like you do with the other databases. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for telling us about Fold3. Absolutely, thank you. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about summer camps at the library. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. Steve is going to talk to us about some of the exciting camps happening this summer at the library. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. All right. Tell us, uh, tell us about these summer camps. What does it mean? Is it like a traditional summer camp? Okay. So our camps are a little different than your traditional summer camp where you go off and stay there, right? Right. We're not going to have them stay at the library. <laughs> so these are more day camps. So okay. uh, we usually try to do some in the morning and in the evening. Okay. So your typical camp will go about four to five days and students will come in for maybe an hour to two hours a day and they do some sort of activity and then the next day they come in same time same instructor instructor and then the same kids are there too and they build on the last day's camp so okay. it's almost like a multi-part class that you come for for the whole week something whole like week. that right okay yeah and it's really great because they get to be with the same group of kids so they get to know 
uh, the same kids over the course of a week and they get the same instructors. They get to build a little learning community over the course of right. about four or five days. And make friends yeah. and all that. So yeah, so it is, it's sort of like a traditional camp in that sense. Yeah, and it's yeah. a great opportunity for kids or parents who can't necessarily get to a summer camp or maybe they can't fit one in with the vacations they're doing or right. something like that. You still get the same activities and learning enrichment experiences that you're going to get at a normal activity camp, but this way it's a little more flexible. Right, right. And you yeah. said there are certain times you're doing two a day, is that correct? Yeah, Kinda so like a... for most of the camps we're going to do them, we're going to repeat them. So one camp goes in the morning and one is in the evening, just so we can work around parents' schedules. So okay. There's a couple camps that aren't like that, you just kind of have to pick and choose which ones are available. Okay, okay. Well, what are some of the summer camps that we're offering? I'm excited to... Okay, we've, we've got a bunch. Okay. Now, some of these are gonna be sold out. Some of them um, still have spots available. So okay. you wanna get into these pretty quick. And the way to sign up is obviously, you go to our website, lebanonlibrary.org, mm -hmm. or you call our phone number. Okay. So that's 513-932-BOOK, okay. and then sign up from there. Um, even if a class or a camp is sold out, you can still get on our wait list. So if you see something you really like, definitely sign up for the wait list because we get cancellations the day before. Right, so it right. helps to just be on there and then we'll send you an email and you can, you can still get signed up. Okay, sounds good. So the first one we're doing is called Reading Buddies. We're really excited about this one. This is primarily for uh, grades kindergarten through third. Okay. And they're gonna be working with teenagers about, um, 7th through 12th grade. Okay. So the teenagers get to read to the kids, and so they're their little reading buddies. Oh, And they it. help them read, and they read with them uh, for an hour or two at the library, mm -hmm. and they help them finish their summer reading program. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so to do all their 20 summer reading program books, the teens come in and, and read with their little reading buddies. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be really cute. Uh, so teen volunteers can sign up, and then kids grades K through third can sign up for okay. that one. Do they get the same reading buddy? I'm sorry, or does it That's just kind of? That's a good question. Okay. Um, I think they probably will. Okay. So they should get the same reading buddy, kind of like a big brothers, big sisters right, kind of thing. Right. Where you, you get a little mentor. So right. that'll be that'll be really nice. Okay. Um, so that's going to be starting June 4th and going to August 13th. So this is okay. going to be every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Yeah. So reading it's a little buddy. different okay. from like a week long camp. It's just every Tuesday. Uh, from starting June 4th and then ending August 13th. Okay. So that'll be nice. All right. Uh, the next one we have is Game Camp. So Game Camp is where we get students together. They're going to be playing board games. They're going to be playing wow. outdoor games, um, life-size games. So if you've ever seen like life-size chess, yes. they're going to be playing something <laughs> like that. Yes. Uh, we've got, it's summer, so we're going to be playing water games, oh, lots of yeah. water sports. So every day they're playing a different game. They're interacting with kids. They're engaging in a lot of constructive learning play right. with kids their age. Uh, so that's going to be really fun. A lot of different games. So if your kids love games, this is a great way to get them active, get them outside and playing with other kids in a social context. That sounds awesome, yeah. Yeah, so if your kids love video games, this is a good way to get them to be outside right. and with other Move kids. Right, them being a little physical. Right, yes. yeah, these are going to be definitely <laughs> physical games. They're going to yep. be fun. So that's ages 10 to 14. 10 to 14, okay. And that's going to go from June 3rd through June 7th. Okay. And if you don't catch any of these dates or times, these are still all available on our website. You can always call and, and find out what times they are. Right, right. Uh, we've also got Photography Camp. Uh, right. I'm excited about that one because that's I the bet. one I'm teaching. I bet. Yeah. yeah, so that is gonna be, let's see, that's gonna be for ages 14 through 18. So there's, okay. it's a teen photography camp. Teen photography camp, yeah. okay. And that's gonna also be from June 3rd through the 7th. Okay. So in that camp, we're gonna be talking mostly about digital photography, but if you wanna bring in some film cameras, we'll totally talk about that as well. I've been getting into film a little bit, so we're probably gonna talk about film cameras. Right. So if the teenagers want to bring in their, their dad's old film camera and their grandpa's old film camera, we'll talk about those. We'll okay. learn about photography, and then we'll go on photo walks around the city, and we'll probably go up to Miller Park and do a couple photo walks up there. And then we might even uh, create a little, little makeshift studio in the library and practice some studio work. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, so yeah. that's going to be really fun. Any yeah. budding teen photographers out there, definitely check that one out. Right, yeah. right. Now this next one looks really interesting. Tell us about this. Yeah, so this next one's CSI Camp, and that's for ages 8 to 12, okay. and it's going to be going from June 17th through the 21st. Okay. So CSI Camp is just what you think it's going to be. Right. It's crime scene investigation. <laughs> so 
students get to learn about how crime scene investigators do the work they do. Right. So they're going to be learning about fingerprinting, um, taking bite impressions, um, different techniques that an investigator or uh, a police officer would use. Right. Uh, we, I think we're having a police officer come in to talk a little bit about what they do in their day-to-day -day job. Oh, that's excellent. Um, yeah, a lot of different really cool uh, things that they can learn. They're doing handwriting analysis. Just, really? Yeah. And they get to solve a, a crime, if you will, uh, that, that we create, and then they get to use those techniques they learned to figure out who did the crime. That's incredible. Yeah. That sounds really fun. So if you've got kids who are interested in that kind of career field, this is a great right. way to get them excited about that and doing some hands-on activities where they're actually using the things they would use uh, in the real world. Right, yeah. right. Uh, we've also got Mighty Makers Camp. Uh, that is for ages 5 to 10. 5 to 10. And right. that's going to be from July 15th through the 19th. Okay. And in Mighty Makers, we're going to be doing a lot of maker projects. So those okay. are things where we're using recyclable materials or just putting things together, or doing crafts. And a lot of times it involves using math or science in some way to, mm -hmm. to make some sort of project. And then they get to take it home with them. Oh, really? So all okay. of these projects, though, are going to be themed with the summer reading program's theme, which is superheroes and comic books. Oh, neat. Okay. So yeah, we're going to be doing superhero crafts and comic book crafts and things like that. So if your okay. kids are into Marvel, right. this is the thing right. to get them into is uh, the Mighty Makers Camp. That's okay. going to be a lot of cool superhero crafts. Right. Uh, we've got a couple other ones mm -hmm. that are filled up right now, but okay. don't let that stop you from signing up for the wait list because like I said, we definitely get people who drop out and we would really love to fill out those camps. So okay. kind of get on the wait list, you'll get an email if someone drops out and then you can get right in and, and go to these. So the other ones we have are Reader's Theater mm -hmm. and that's where we're gonna be reading books and then acting them out in a little theater. Really? So, yeah, okay. so if, if your, your kid's into drama and, mm -hmm. and plays, doing plays and, or yeah. if you want them to be, mm -hmm. uh, sign them up for Reader's Theater. Those are gonna be really fun. Okay, and we're do the parents get to see the, the product at the yes, end? Yes, the end okay. day is gonna be the parents get to see the oh, final fun. play, okay. so that'll be cool. And yeah. what ages is that, do you know? I don't have the ages on that okay. one, but if you go to our website, it'll okay. have the ages there. Um, we're also doing a science camp where okay. we're going to be doing science experiments, so that should be really fun. Mm -hmm. Lots of other crafts and uh, just experiments with different science techniques, things okay. like that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we're doing stop motion camp. So if you've ever seen a stop motion film like uh, Gumby or Wallace yes. and Gromit, yeah. we're going to be making stop motion with clay and action figures and drawings. And the whole week we'll just be making stop motion films with wow. uh, different materials. Right. So yeah. that would be for your budding directors or producers. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. definitely. And they get to fill all <laughs> sorts of roles. So we're going to have directors, we're going to have storyboard artists. Uh, the actors are the people who are going to be moving the clay pieces around. So there's a lot of different roles they get to play and they get to swap each role. So, okay. yeah. Well, how much do, do the camps cost? So I know, you know, if you go out anywhere now, the camps are getting pretty popular. Mm -hmm. uh, any type of activity camp is super popular now. There's a lot of them out there. They're all pretty expensive. So we want to put the city's tax dollars to work and make all these free. So all of our camps are completely free of charge. Just make sure you can sign up for every day of the camp and you get to come for free. We pay for all the materials. A lot of the camps you get to take stuff home. So it's completely free. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. So remind us again where we can find information if they want to you know, more, know more about a specific camp, where do we go? Okay, so the best place to go is lebanonlibrary.org okay. and right on that main page is going to be any events we have and you can click on our calendar and see more information and what age groups are allowed and we're a little flexible with age groups depending on okay. how close they are okay. uh, and then you can find out what days and times they're available too. Okay. And if you want to know even more information and talk to some of the instructors, you can just give us a call at 513-932-BOOK okay. and we'll we can get you signed up and tell you more information about it. Wonderful. Well, thank you for telling us about those camps, Steve. Thank you. All right. All right, we'll be right back with the June calendar for the Lebanon Public Library. Welcome back. These are some of the events happening this June at the Lebanon Public Library. On Tuesday the 4th, we have Reading Buddies program from 6 to 7 p.m. On Thursday, June the 6th, we have our first movie night with The Incredibles 2 at 8 p.m. On Tuesday the 11th, we have Reading Buddies again from 6 to 7 p.m. On Wednesday, June the 12th, 
we have our Sinclair workshop on resume building, and that's at 5 p.m. On Thursday, June the 13th, we have movie night, and we will be watching Ralph Breaks the Internet at 8 p.m. On Saturday, June 15th, we have Donuts with Dad at 10 a.m. On Tuesday, June the 18th, we have Toddler Time at 10.30 and Stories and Crafts at 1 p.m. On Thursday, June the 20th, we have Movie Night, Christopher Robbins at 8 p.m. On Wednesday, June the 26th, we have our Do-It-Yourself 4th of July t-shirts at 11 a.m. And then on Friday, June the 28th, we have our Mini Teen Lock-In at 5 p.m. So these are some of the events this June at the Ledman Public Library. Thank you for watching the show and we'll see you next month.